morning. It is a joy to be together this morning as the Lord brings us into his house. So welcome to all of you and God's peace and blessings on you this day. Welcome to any guests and visitors. If you are a guest or visitor with us today, there are great cards in your pews which you can uh, write down your name or address and phone number if you'd like us to make ministry contact with you. Uh, also for anyone, there are also pink cards in the pew uh, that you can write any prayer requests that you'd like us to pray for privately or publicly uh, and put those into the offering plate uh, as you need. So. Uh, those are available for you. Today is the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, and we come off of a, a, a wonderful week of ministry here at Good Shepherd as we celebrate uh, the closing of VBS. And so uh, we'll be talking from our theme verse, actually, from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20 in the message this morning, uh, where we hear God's encouragement to put on uh, his armor, all of his armor for our lives. And so we'll talk about what that means uh, this morning. Uh, we do have communion this morning. So for any guests and visitors, please see the front of our bulletin for what we teach and believe about communion. Uh, and with that, let us join together in singing our opening song together, Be Strong in the Lord. <coughs> stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. So we pause in silence to reflect on God's word. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, 
and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, keep us from despairing amid the threats and afflictions of this mortal life. Direct our hearts to your word, that we may know and rejoice in our Savior, and in grace sufficient to all, for all that troubles us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this 12th Sunday after Pentecost comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. And here we hear about <clears throat> Elijah running from... Jezebel because he has just slaughtered all the prophets of Baal and he wonders how the Lord is going to protect him and keep him safe. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if... By this time tomorrow, I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush and sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush, and he fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then he lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. And so he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You 
epistle reading today is from Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 20. Put on the full armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. Always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador, ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able out of reverence for the ministry of Jesus Christ. Alleluia, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Because, as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about Him because He said, I am the bread that, come, that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can He now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated, and at this time, the children are welcome to come forward for a children's message. <clears throat> <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Come on up. It is so great to see all of you up here this morning. 
We've got some friends. You've got some friends here, which is good. We've got some new faces here, which is good. It is so good to see all of you. Say, we, what prayer have we been learning in children's messages? Does anyone remember the, the actions of the prayer, the, the name of the prayer that we've been learning with actions? Remember all of that? What's the name of that prayer? Do you remember? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that's all right. <clears throat> it's called the Lord's Prayer. Raise your hand if you've heard the Lord's Prayer before. Yeah, we've, we talked about the Lord's Prayer. Remember, our Father who art in? Say it again. Our Father who art in? Heaven, yeah, good. Let's, we've been learning those actions, so why don't you stand up and let's do those actions together. And if you don't know them, don't worry, because we'll repeat them so we remember them all. Go ahead and stand on up and let's do our actions. Repeat after me. Our Father who art... Oh, wait, yeah. Our Father who art in heaven. Repeat after me. Our Father who art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Good job. And then the next one is give us this day our daily bread. Good job. Now comes a new one. Forgive us. Rub your chest like this. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Good. All right. So repeat after me. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Good job. That's really hard. That's a lot of words. But really that means, hey, God, when we sin against you, forgive us. And when others hurt us, help us to forgive them. So let's try one more time. Repeat after me. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Good job. Let's sit down. That's the next action we learned in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Raise your hand if someone's ever done something mean to you before. Yeah. Yeah. Now, go ahead and put your hand down. Raise your hand if you've ever done something mean to someone else. <laughs> it's a little, there's a few less than you. Yeah few less but we've all done mean things right and sometimes we've seen mean things done to each other but you know what when God sees us do mean things and when he sees other people do mean things he doesn't want us to stay mean towards each other he wants us to bring each other together and when we are hurt our heart hurts doesn't it and when other people are hurt you know what? Their heart hurts too. But God sent Jesus Christ to die for you to take that hurt away. And to bring you back together and to remember that he has put a new heart. To do, rub your heart like we are forgiven. We're getting our trespasses forgiven. To give you a new heart to go and forgive others as you have been forgiven. So let's fold our hands and talk to God in prayer. Yeah, yeah, it is good to forgive other people, yeah. And if you're in the pews too, you can pray along with us too. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for forgiving us, for forgiving us our, sins. our sins. Help us, Help us to, forgive to forgive others as you have forgiven us. As you have forgiven us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Good job, boys and girls. You can head back to your seats, and we're all going to sing our next song together. Um.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Weakness is not a Christian characteristic. It is not something that Christians should exemplify, emulate, or even behave like. <clears throat> Weakness is not the same as Christian characteristics like humility, patience, kindness, gentleness, or self-control. To the world, those characteristics may seem as though there is weakness associated with them. But weakness from Scripture's perspective, that is to say from God's point of view, from His truth, weakness is not being able to stand against the devil. That's why weakness is not a Christian characteristic. Because you are able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Now, that's not to say that we as Christians don't ever feel weak. Because we do. Uh, once when I was in middle school, I uh, went to this sports camp, <clears throat> and I really didn't know many people at this sports camp. I, I had grown up going to a small private school for uh, first grade through eighth grade, and uh, when I went to this uh, camp, uh, most of my friends were from the other town over at school, and so this one was in my town, though, in, in West Fargo. And when I arrived at that sports camp, I saw someone from my church, one of my friends. And so I, I went and I quietly sat down next to him, hoping that no one else would notice me. I would just be able to blend in. And next thing I know, my, my, my buddy, my friend, he goes, Oh, guys, this guy right here, he's a pastor's kid. Nothing could be more embarrassing. <laughs> because it, it, it felt like I was being put in, in the crosshairs, right? Now people knew who I was. It's safe to assume that a pastor's kid should care about Jesus and know that he's cared for by Jesus. And I didn't want people to know that. I didn't want people to know that strength. And, and so I, I, I found myself trying to, to, to hide and also to, to boast my way out of it so that we could just move on to different topics. And so I responded uh, with um, a, a, a shyness <clears throat> to which they responded with the question, have you read the whole Bible? And all I could think about was, boy, I really should probably have read the Bible at least 12 times by now. <laughs> and I hadn't. But I knew I couldn't lie about it. <laughs> so what are you supposed to do when you feel weakness, but you know you don't have a weak God? When you know you have a God who has saved you in the waters of holy baptism, given you a new name, put on the armor that you're supposed to carry with you throughout your life, and that he has more strength for you than you could ever imagine. Well, I ended up looking at them and saying, well, I know all of the books of the Bible, and I start spouting them off one by one as fast as I can in hopes that they'll just be so amazed that we'll be able to move on, but I was saved by the bell, and the coaches rang the whistle, and we started with our drills. In life, we're often pulled into two different responses when we find ourselves in uncomfortable situations where our weakness is being pressed upon. 
We either tend to respond in arrogance to people's questions, or we tend to respond in a way that we hide away. We deflect. We try to move on from it, maybe going to some entertaining thing we saw this week in hopes that they'll just move on from the uncomfortable realities of this world. I mean, what do you do when someone asks you the question like, why did God allow 62 people to die in a plane crash in Brazil? Well, you can respond in arrogance as if you know the mind of God. Or you can respond in fear, acting weak, knowing your weaknesses, that you don't really know why. Well, you know that there's sin, of course, right? But everyone kind of knows that there's sin deep down in some way, shape, or form. That's an easy answer out. What do you do when someone asks you about the opening ceremony of the Olympics and what you thought? But they're not asking for your Minnesota nice opinion. They're asking for your unfiltered, unfettered Opinion. What you really think. They want to know who you really are. You can respond in arrogance, in pride, and contempt, and anger. And you might even feel right. Or you can run, deflect deter the conversation from going in any serious situation into any serious situation Christianity is not a place where weakness resides and I, our epistle reading shows us what i mean by that Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Often we are drawn into an either-or response when we are confronted with situations that press upon our weakness because we fail to recognize that there is a spiritual battle being fought. See, the kids that I met that day at that sports camp, they weren't against me, but Satan was. It's not the person that is against you. It is the spirit behind the person that will try to inflate your ego or try to get you to be ashamed of Jesus. we fail to respond in Christ-like strength when we fail to recognize that the conversations we are in have a spiritual element behind them. It's easy to feel weak as a Christian, but that is not how God made you. God made you with his own armor, and it comes from his strength, from the strength of Jesus. When we hear Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, where it says, put on the full armor of God, we often don't think of the of God as the primary piece in that sentence. It's his armor. We hear put on and we think, how can I do it? How can I get it done? How can I make sure it stays on? How can I make sure it fits? <laughs> how can I make sure it never falls off? 
and we've forgotten that it's of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord. Not in yourself, not in by how much you read in the news, not in by how much you think you know about how the world works and how things are going to go. Don't be strong in trying to run away from everything and claim at the end of the day, I made it through unscathed, with no scrapes, no bruises, no harm, nothing bad ever was done to me. Be strong in the Lord. You know, five times, if Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20 says, stand. It doesn't say sit. It doesn't say lay down. It says stand in the Lord. That requires strength. It requires strength to stand against the schemes of the devil in the Lord Jesus. But you don't stand hoping that Jesus is right or that he's strong enough. You stand because he's already won. You know, if you were to think about the strongest Christian in your life, uh, you might have some good examples. Uh, but I want to uh, bring your minds back to one Christian that we all know, that we saw who was strong beyond what we could ever imagine, David. David is one of those Christians who was strong in the Lord. Not by his own strength, but by the Lord's. I mean, his battle against Goliath is the epitome of an unlikely story of God's strength fighting against the forces of evil when all odds were stacked against God's young, tiny, weak servant, David. He was so young and weak, they didn't even send him to the front lines. And when his dad did send him, it was just for a grocery run. (laughs) Before David fights Goliath, he sees and hears someone opposing God. He hears Goliath's taunts, not against Israel's strength, but against God and his strength. And David, by faith, boldly stands up against that. This this is what 1 Samuel 17, verses 36 through 38 say. David speaks and says to Saul, Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. But he doesn't go on to say because... I'm so strong and I know what's right and I know how to kill this guy. I'll go get five stones. I'm a really good shot with a slingshot. He'll never see it coming. He doesn't say, yeah, Saul, let's just try out your armor and hope that it all works out. (laughs) He throws off, hiding away in someone else's mindset. He throws off his arrogance and his own strength and he relies on the strength of the Lord that was given to him when he protected the flock of sheep in the wilderness and he sees the spiritual battle that is behind Goliath and so he goes on to say for Goliath has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. David knows that whether he runs from the battle or is bold in himself, he's still going to be under threat from the Philistines. If he doesn't stand with the Lord... He'll forever be lost. 
The battle isn't against the person. It's against the spirit behind the person. And Goliath says as much when he says, when David says to Goliath, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of armies whom you have defiled. Standing in the strength of the Lord with his armor put upon us is trusting God's strength in every moment. Because he's assured you of it in the past and you can look to his promises being fulfilled in your life. That's why you find yourself in an unlikely place here today. Where we have already admitted our weaknesses, our failures, and our insufficiencies. And yet Christ comes again to us. Look at how strong, the the strong body and hands of Jesus being given to you, placed in your hands. Hands that are no longer going to be weak, but hands that take the strength of Jesus and help one another up when they've fallen. Hands that look at those who are grieving, that can't grapple with how the world works the way that it does and they embrace those who are grieving. Hands that are not weak, that push others away out of arrogance or so that they can run and hide. But hands that have the risen Savior that will stand strong with God's word in hand by faith being protected from all the assaults of the world. This is what it means to stand strong in the Lord. You are not weak. You don't need to fear anything that can go on in the world for you are strong in the Lord and he has taken everything upon himself that could happen, that could go wrong, that could entice us to react strongly and put it away by our own strength or that could cause us to run and hide in a cave like Elijah did. He has put it all under his feet at the cross. And his promise to you is that even when you stand strong and you fall, he will raise you up on the last day. He is your strength. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all our understanding keep and guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. And I want you to imagine as we confess this creed that this is how God is inviting us to put on his armor this morning. So we confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. He the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Mighty Lord, you, you manifest your power over all things through the leaders in this and every land. By your grace, make all those who serve us in government wise, just, and honest, and guide them toward the common good that we may serve you without fear. Lord, in your mercy. Gentle Savior, you came not to condemn, but to heal and save. Grant, us, grant to us hearts of mercy, that we may forgive as we have been forgiven. By our acts of mercy, display your great compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Good shepherd, raise up good and faithful shepherds of your people that the church may be blessed with passionate preaching and faithful teaching. Bless President Harrison presiding over Synod, Brady Finneran, our district president, and Jeff Ross, our circuit visitor. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, give guidance and counsel to those unemployed and underemployed that they may be equipped to supply the bread, to be given the supply of the bread for their families and share with the hungry from their abundance. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Father, in our wounds you are wounded. So be with those who suffer any burden of the body or mind. Deliver them from all their sufferings according to your mercy, especially Mike Schultz, Connie Norheim, Abby Johnson, Kathy Bergs, Jennifer Quast, Ron Lewison, Glenn Miller, Sue Murphy, Kathy Peterson, Melody Varnum, Stephanie Holcomb, Kathy Betterman, Kathy Nato, Nikki Dahl, Henry and Gina Lomheim, Ramona and Tom Breitkreitz, Carol Chorley, Leon Wunderlich, and Michelle Wren. We give you thanks for the continued healing granted to Evie Schreiber, Brent Miner, Judy Shorter, Laura Schinnebarger, Pete Emery, Paula Naomi During, Mike Newand, Ron Rogers, Addie Mork, Evelyn Bolke, Lynn Murray, and Howard Breitkreitz. Grant that you would hear all their petitions and heal them according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, prepare the hearts of your people that we who come at our Lord's bidding may receive in this communion his flesh and blood for our good so that no sin may ever remain in us to condemn us. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have not withheld from us anything we need for this body and life. Help us now to trust in your answer to our prayers and give to us such confidence that in your fatherly wisdom we may be content and at peace with the strength of your answer. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. You may be seated as we collect our tithes and our offerings to present as an offering to the Lord.
Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, mighty Lord, you brought all things into being, and your glory is revealed in all your mighty acts of creation. But chiefly do we praise your goodness for bearing with the people you made when they rebelled against your goodness and brought sin and death upon themselves. In the fullness of time, you brought forth your Son of the Virgin, by the Spirit to accomplish salvation and redeem us from our self-appointed end. Now, by his own bidding, we come in his name to his supper, that we may be strengthened in body and soul upon the food of his flesh and blood. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began, above all kingdoms, above all From your abundance, O Lord, you have supplied us with all things in Christ. Grant to us grace that we may receive your gift with joy and thanksgiving. And by this blessed communion, we may rest our burdened hearts upon your goodness, knowing that Christ is strong enough and trusting in him always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn, The Battle Belongs to the Lord. Go in peace this day, knowing that Christ is your strength. Just a few announcements this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all who uh, helped out with VBS this week, whether it was during the week of VBS, the weakness that you felt throughout the week, it's okay because Christ is strong for you. And anyone who helped out beforehand, getting the preparations ready, uh, gifts, donations, uh, money or item-wise or talent-wise, thank you. Give yourself a round of applause and thanks be to God for all of that work.
It was incredible to see. Uh, this morning we have uh, just uh, a couple kiddos to come up here and show you the crafts that they made throughout this week. So come on up. You guys can stand on up here so they can see uh, the, those crafts because they are awesome. And the joy on the kids' faces running around with these on uh, Monday through, well, Thursday, having all of them. You guys can stand right up here. Stand up here so they can see you. That's good. Aren't these awesome? Aren't these crafts just amazing? Yeah. That's awesome. You guys can go sit back down. Eight-year-old me is just so excited about that. <laughs> I love them. Uh, and there's extras. If anyone didn't get to participate, if you have a child, a grandchild, a great-grandchild that you would like to help, maybe it's an activity that you can talk with them and be strong in the Lord with and share the good news with them. There are extra crafts at the table just in front of the lounge and library area to the left when you exit uh, the sanctuary, take some with you. I might take one myself. Um, also, uh, with regard to VBS, thank you for those helping set up some things. We also need your help to kind of close up today. So there are plenty of tables still downstairs from all the arts and crafts that we did throughout the week. So if we could get some hands to carry those uh, back into the education wing and reset the education wing, that would be much appreciated. So meet downstairs in the uh, youth room to help move those uh, upstairs. Also coming up uh, today at uh, 11, if you want to rush over there right away, uh, Ebenezer in Leaf Valley is celebrating their 150th anniversary, which is incredible. If there's any testament to the strength that God has, it's hearing that a church has pursued God's faith, truth and in faith towards him for 150 years. So if you'd like to go attend worship, they started that at 10 a.m. Uh, there's also a time for stories and celebration at 11 that also will have a meal served at 12 p.m., so noon. Uh, so if you'd like to be a part of that, please, I encourage you to go uh, support our brothers and sisters over at Ebenezer and Leaf Valley. Monday, there's an LWML leader meeting at 4.15. Uh, also on Tuesday, fellowship hall is reserved for the primary elections. Uh, and then there are two meetings, fellowship, me fellowship group meeting at 5 and executive council at 6.30. Also, uh, a great blessing to the church if you haven't participated in it is the group uplifters, which is available for anyone in the community or in our church to uh, help talk through what it looks like uh, when your relationships are going through hurt or harm or difficulty. Uh, so that is uh, Thursday this week at 6.30 in the fellowship hall. A few other announcements. Um, Saturday, August 17th, we need some more help over at the, um, uh, the fair, the county fair, uh, with regard to the Lutheran Mission Center. It's really, really nice. You just help serve uh, food to anyone that wants to buy uh, some food. Maybe just talk with them about uh, why we exist as Lutherans. So if you'd like to help out with that, they're two and a half hour slots, so it's really not that long. There's a sign-up sheet on the LWML board to the right when you exit the sanctuary you can sign up there. Also, August 21st uh, is Fellowship Luncheon at AJ's Cafe in Osakis. And uh, last but not least, we've got our end of the summer market coming up on August 24th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So I hope you can be there and support those vendors and just uh, see, have a fun event together. So any other announcements this morning? Denise and then Evelyn. Good morning. I'd just like to reiterate what Pastor said. We so appreciate all that you have done, all the hours you have participated, especially, and I'm talking with, I'm talking about Brenda too. <laughs> I'm the one that you see, but she has also been one of the leaders in this venture. And it was just fitting that today was, um, the epistle lesson was, from our VBS. Um, I want to thank Henry Hunter Cook for all the time and effort he took to make our shields. I want to thank Shirley Johnson for our absolutely tremendous background. And 
just to let you know, um, next Sunday, any children that were at VBS that are here will help present um, our mission funds to the Veterans Memorial Honor Guard for the, t for the total of $1,548.51. Uh, we had an average of 71 kids here every night and they had a blast. We just thank you all. If you donated um, helmets of any sort, those are on the table with the Thrivent shirts. You can pick up your helmet and you can pick up a Thrivent shirt as well. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Evelyn, you have an announcement as well. Okay, so please talk to Evelyn about helping out at the Lutheran Mission Center uh, at the county fair so she can get passes all figured out. If you, if you sign up to help out with that, which I encourage you to, uh, they will be in your mailbox uh, this week. So uh, with that, uh, Greg. Just real quick again. All right, with that, go in peace, serve the Lord, and have a great day in his strength.